Welcome to my video update on the development progress for the Steam VR simulation of the 1851 Great Exhibition. We start this update in the Western Nave, roughly midway between the Ross Telescope and the model of Liverpool Docks. Here is the Fountain for a Marketplace by John Seeley of Keppel Row, New Road, London. Described in the catalogue as being made of artificial stone, which was tested for 20 years. The exhibition documents state that the fountain was so large, the water jets could not be operated at full power. Further east along the nave, we come to the blind school display cabinet we first referred to in video number 10 in this series. At the great exhibition itself, this cabinet displayed items such as embossed books, raised maps, and apparatus for enabling the blind to write. Here the cabinet is populated with an image of the blind school building and an illustration of Lucas type. Turning round, we see three newly added items in the centre of the Western Nave Main Avenue. These match this illustration from Recollections of the Great Exhibition of 1851. In the centre is a stone cross created by Harriet Ross of Rostreva, Ireland. The principal image is of the crucifixion. On the arms of the cross are images from the New Testament of the Good Shepherd and the return of the prodigal son. Below the main image are the heads of St. Peter, St. John, St. James and St. Paul. The reverse of the cross is described in the exhibition catalogue as having images from the Old Testament. However we have yet to locate an illustration of this side, so for now it remains blank. Either side of the stone cross are two examples of pillars of madripoor marble, intended for church or palatial decoration, displayed by Mr. Henry Champenown of Totnes, Devon. The marble came from a quarry in Devon. Madripoor marble is named after the fossil corals it contains, which are known as madripoors. Turning south from here, we move towards the British Sculpture Room. We have not located any illustrations of this room, but there are several texts listing the contents and their approximate locations. The first of these contents has now been added, The Greek Huntsman, by John Gibson. The model here has been provided by Oliver Larrick. See the comments below this video for a link to his work. Finally, we move to the south transept, in the middle of which was a post box. We have only located images where the post box appears as a small, incidental, background item, and its description in the text from the exhibition is quite vague. So instead, the box presented here is a simplified model of the Penfold post box, introduced in 1866. There were three collections daily, 11am, 3pm and 5pm, except for Sundays, when, of course, the exhibition was not open. Look out for my next video, in which I'll be visiting Queen Victoria and Prince Albert in Liverpool.